So one thing I often get asked is how do you predict the weather or how do you know when is the best time to go out? And you don't know every time, but there are certain things you can look at, different weather apps and different websites. They can give you a rough idea of the best times to go out and attempt to shoot your landscapes. So I'm going to delve into four different apps and websites that I like to use for different things for seascapes or looking at low fog and I'll go through them and show you how to use them. Okay so the first app I use a lot is called windy.com and I'll put the links to all the apps and the websites in the description of this video but you can also download the app onto your phone for windy.com and a few of the others I'll mention. So for windy.com you can go to the website or you can use the app and what I love about windy.com is it gives you this topographical view of the area that you're staying in. So you can zoom out, you can zoom in, and you can look around the area that you are interested in shooting. So for this example, I'll be looking at Cape Town. This is where I live. And if you look on the right hand side, you'll see there's a panel you can open with all these different layers and options that you can look through. And this is generally where people get a little bit daunted when using Windy is there are quite a few options that you can look at. But the panel on the right is to change and look at different things from clouds to rain um, to the wind. If you look down at the bottom, you will see the dates. So you'll see going from Tuesday, which I'm on now, all the way to next week Thursday so it gives you quite a, an extended prediction into the future and you can click along this line at any point and it will tell you what the weather is predicted for that particular date and time and it generally shifts by about an hour so if you hit the play button in the bottom left it will slowly move hour by hour throughout um, the timeline so let's just go back to today and as you can see on our map, all we can see is these wind lines and that's the direction that the wind is blowing. The most important one that we're going to focus on for landscape photography will be looking at clouds. So if you look at the right, you can see there is the cloud tab. And if you click on it, you can see the clouds and where they'll be positioned at a particular time. If you look below the cloud tab, you can see high levels medium clouds and low clouds. These are great to tell you how high the cloud is, but in terms of shooting, if you want those high levels, nice colors in the sky, I recommend coming down to this one called Cloud Tops. Select Cloud Tops, it has a little picture of an airplane. And if we look in the middle here at the bottom for the scale, I've set mine to meters, and it tells you how high the clouds are gonna be. And for those nice clouds that give you the color, those high level clouds, you're looking for something in the range of about 7,000 to 12,000 um, meters above sea level. And that's the range you're looking at. So when you look at your timeline and you scroll through, I'm just gonna skip through to something that's a good example of some nice high levels. There we go. So if we look at Monday next week, we can see the map went completely orange and there we're looking at clouds at roughly about um, 10, 10 kilometers above the surface of the earth. And if we zoom out, we can see where those clouds are gonna be. And those are the clouds we are looking for to give us color in the sky. So I use the cloud tops setting quite a lot in order to see where there will be good days to go and shoot and potentially get some nice color in the sky. However, you also have to look at the cloud base because you don't want to have low levels, thick low levels below the high levels and then you can't see the high levels. So you need to look at cloud tops and cloud base uh, in conjunction. And if we change to cloud base, we can see there are no clouds in the area. And you can see the scale for cloud base is from zero meters up to 1.5 five kilometers in the sky and in the top corner here you can see okay there's some higher low levels coming in but that won't affect us so at the moment sunrise on monday looks like potentially might be a good day to go out and shoot for some nice color in the sky and that's how you can sort of start to plan and now start to predict when can you go out and when do you want to go and shoot for color in the sky 
um, I use the cloud tops setting quite a lot. And the next thing I use Windy quite a lot for is looking for low cloud or fog as it comes in. And for that, I use the cloud base setting. Let's go have a look. Let's see where there's a good example. Okay, here we go on Wednesday morning. We can see in the Franschhoek area, there is roughly zero meters of clouds. That means it's very low. That's a good indicator. We are looking for this purple color, which indicates potentially cloud inversions or very low cloud that we can get above and get that beautiful blanket of cloud below us. Um, so we're looking for the purple, maybe a little bit into the red, but purple is what we are looking for. However, this might not necessarily mean that it is low fog. So we have to look at this um, setting along with a few others to give us a better idea as to what's causing this low cloud. And the most important thing that can affect it is rain. So if there is rain, you can get a very low cloud, but it's that misty rain where you're in the fog and it's drizzling. And we don't want to go when that is, we want to go when there's no rain and there's low cloud. So to check that, the other setting we'll use is visibility, just below cloud base. And that says that we have minimal visibility. If you look at our scale, it's less than uh, 0.8 kilometers, which is a good indicator for low cloud. So that one is tick, that looks pretty good. Then we wanna go up to the fog. There's actually a fog setting, click on the fog setting. Okay, that's showing us no fog in that region. So that's an indicator that this might be due to rain. And then lastly, we'll come up and tick on the rain and thunder. And we can see, okay, there is a lot of rain coming in. Um, it is quite wet in the area. And if we look through that, you can see it goes blue. And this tells us that that indicator of low fog using the cloud base with the visibility actually wasn't the fog that we needed to shoot with. It was due to this rain uh, precipitation that was coming in. So not a good idea to go and shoot when you have rain and a lot of rain and the low fog indicator. Ideally we want to have no rain and then a good indication of cloud base and visibility. And then it's a good idea to go out and you might get lucky and get some low fog. Okay the second app I want to tell you about is called Clear Outside. This is a nice app um, to use in conjunction with Windy. Windy is nice for the topographical view. You can see which direction the storm front is coming in from, which direction the clouds are moving from. However, to get a lot of information in one view, whereas with Windy you have to click through all the different tabs and then kind of compile your, your decision from looking at multiple tabs on different layers, the Clear Outside app gives you everything in one view in a nice table and you can quickly make an informed decision from that. So using the Windy app, with clear outside app is a good combination for looking for high levels to go and shoot for sunsets as well as that low fog in the mornings or afternoons to shoot those cloud inversions. Okay, so you can go to the app or you can go to the website clearoutside.com and when you open it, you can type in your region at the top and I've put uh, for Cape Town forecast and you come down and you got everything all those multiple options that you had in windy uh, very similar in clear outside but all put together in one table so you can see everything very quickly by glancing over and the first one is total clouds over the ones we are more interested in this is this low cloud bar so that's going to tell us potentially if we're going to have some fog and then this high cloud bar and that's going to tell us if we have some nice high levels which potentially can give us color in the sky then we also want to use the visibility and fog percentage. And you can see if we come here to tomorrow, as we looked on in Windy, it says that there will be rain and there'll be zero percentage chance of fog. So what we were seeing were those low level clouds. We come up here to low levels, 100%, but purely because of the rain that was coming in and sitting in that high lying region in Franschhoek. So we know that's not a good idea to go and shoot because there's rain and low level clouds. So bad idea to go and shoot fog. What we want is low level clouds um, with no rain and potentially zero visibility and the fog bar percentage to be quite high. Then we know, good idea, let's go and shoot. 
Okay, the next app that I use quite a bit, and this is particularly for astrophotography or for shooting the moon, is dateandtime.com and particularly looking at the moon phases. So if you go to date and time, um, I've selected Cape Town, you can select moon rise and moon set. And if you scroll down, it'll show you the whole month that you're looking at and what time the moon rises and sets. So I've just scrolled down for August to the new moon, which is this black dot on the 27th of August. And what we can see with this is it, it allows me to see how long before new moon and how long after new moon I can actually go and shoot uh, without a moon in the sky for astrophotography. So if we look at moon set, we can see the moon sets in the morning, um, starting here on the 19th at 11.40 in the morning. However, it rises at 1 a.m., then 2 a.m., then 3 a.m., then 4 a.m., then 5 a.m. So I can basically shoot from the 18th quite comfortably before midnight. I can shoot the moon setting, I mean the Milky Way setting, and I can shoot as it gets closer to new moon, I can shoot later and later into the night. So this allows me to predict when I can shoot and <clears throat> when the moon will be present in the sky for my astrophotography images. So I really like using date and time. It allows me to see when I can go and shoot Milky Way um, and how many days before new moon I have to go and I don't necessarily have to go on new moon. And then the last app or website is magicseaweed.com. I use this a lot when going to shoot seascapes, predicting what the sea will be doing, looking at the tides, looking at the swell. This is all very important when shooting seascapes. You don't want to drive out an hour or two to a location and then the swell is massive and you can't shoot the compositions you had in mind. So the first thing you see when looking at this website is this little table in the middle and this tells you when high tide is and low tide is as well as when sunrise and sunset is. So it's nice to look at these together and what you can see on this table is that high tide is at 6.14 p.m and sunset is at 6 18 p.m. so you can know on this day high tide is at sunset and maybe not a good idea to go shoot those seascapes where you need a lot of rock formations and you need to get close to the water because the tide will be very high so you can plan using the tide using this website and if you scroll down it gives this nice chart for several days in the future and you can see how high the surf is going to be and if you look at this, the surf is quite low, which is really nice to get close to the water. However, on the Saturday through to the Monday, the surf gets much bigger from 10 to 16 uh, feet. So, you know, you might have a big swell or a lot of breakers, might give you a lot of white water. This is something you might want. So you can predict, OK, if I want to go shoot a location where I need a lot of white water and I'm far away from the surf, uh, maybe I must go on Saturday because there's a big swell. So a nice app to use in combination with the other weather apps just to tell you a little bit about what the sea is doing uh, when you plan to go and shoot those seascapes. So these are the four websites and apps I use 99% of the time. There are a few others I might check for very specific things, but in general, these are the apps I use all the time and a good start to start playing around and learning how to use them. And hopefully this will improve your hit ratio on going out when the weather is good to shoot landscapes or seascapes.